<clears throat> Welcome back to Theme Park Wizard. Today, I'm with my great guest host, special guest, Christopher Orange Girl 55. Hello there. Hey, Ethan. What's going on, brother? <laughs> not, not much, except I swear there's two friends of mine, or one friend of mine, and you, and another one and who lives in Arizona. Every time I FaceTime or video chat them, the room looks completely, I feel like it looks different. You, I feel like you got just all whole bunch of darker furniture. It's so weird. You probably did it, but your room is <laughs> so different every time I see you. <laughs> You're like the ultimate makeover man over here. <laughs> but today, uh, so a lot of a lot of stuff has happened since we last chatted. I don't know when that was, but a lot of stuff has happened, <laughs> including uh, something so big that even you did it. You broke from your Disney train and you went to <laughs> Universal. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I did. I drop. I dropped a Universal video today. Yeah, like and it was a long one. <laughs> incredible. So, what do you think of this Super Nintendo World that will be coming here? And it's be opening in Japan in just two months. Well, I have I have a soft spot uh, for Universal. I mean, not Universal. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> <Burn> for, <laughs> I, have, I have a I have a I have a, I love Universal. I love Universal. But I, I I have a soft spot for uh, Nintendo. I I was a I was a kid in the '80s, and Nintendo was like everything back then, you know. And it, it was part of my childhood, so I'm happy. I'm happy to see Nintendo is getting, you know, building these Nintendo lands, and I think it looks great. I think it's absolutely incredible. It looks exactly like a, a Mario World would would look, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks super cool. And I remember in your video you mentioned how it reminded me of like a Toontown or Seuss Landing type of thing, which I can see because it's yeah. like cartoonish and like the green hills. And <laughs> what's super cool about, so in, uh, here in Hollywood, they get the Yoshi version, but the Yoshi ride system for us is the secret life of pets. So, so we'll just be getting Mario Kart, which is totally okay with me. And then, so I don't know if you saw, did you read the full press release of the, 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 the Universal Japan's thing? Or did you just see the Mario Kart stuff? No, I just saw the Mario Kart stuff. Well, right. what's the so, press release? The full press release gave the, the breakdown of the the, uh, the interactivity. So then you have these little bands that look like magic bands. It's around $30. And they have these interactive like mini games you can play with your friends and other people in the land with these bands on. You can like jump and like get the little question mark boxes. And then, oh, that's dope. and then they have all these little mini games you can do, like almost like what Galaxy's Edge wanted to do. Um, but then at the end, when you complete like three or so, you team up with like four or five people in the land, whether it's your group or someone else. And then you have this boss battle with Bowser Jr. and some other bosses. And then you get this like good big prize at the end. So that's what? super cool. That is really cool. That's very cool. Yeah, so it's like that, one giant game. Like literally, it's yeah, a game. Yeah, it's literally <laughs> walking into a game. So that, and I think there's some. If you look at the concept art, there's some binoculars. You like, they look like something you'd see like, like an observation tower. You look at the, you pay and look at the binoculars. Well, those game, those are like actual like AR binoculars. So you'll be using those for the, partially for the games and to see like little little things in the land that you can't see in person so it's a pretty a pretty interactive thing so i'm super excited to see it here wow. but also in the video as well and they're also to keep their um the keep the interactivity they're gonna do like a advanced reservation system for the land so all that interactive stuff will still be available on day one even if the the COVID situation still going on, so that'd be super awesome for those people. Well, and it seems like the interactive stuff. Luckily for the Nintendo, from what you're explaining, it seems like a lot of it is 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 like um like the Magic Band. You're not really touching yeah. anything, so it's you know. Yeah, it's more kind of personal, and then the only it's like AR will be like your that would be the only time you're interacting with someone else. But that's that'd be, and it's multi level. I love multi level lands. It's, it makes it like much, you know, it's not just like a 2D, it's like a 3D surface, which is pretty. It's like Galaxy's Edge. I like how you can go up and down and those uh, 
it makes it more what do you call it more like immersive it makes it more like you're in a town or something yeah that is cool and with mario that's perfect because mario is a platform game so yeah. the different levels really plays to that theme. I think that's pretty cool, actually. <laughs> and last thing with the Mario Kart ride, it, yes, you'll be wearing the AR headset, but there also there's also I think there's like seven or eight scenes, but then each scene has like these giant physical sets. So they're also it's not just all virtual, like you know, are all screens like Universal did in the past. There's these massive animatronics and physical sets. So be so be pretty it's like it's like an a ticket attraction yeah yeah i think i think the mario kart ride is going to be a total game changer uh, like i was saying that in my video today i think it's really it's gonna it's gonna blow the roof off of things yeah that's super exciting and now you also mentioned in your video that um <laughs> when you know like universal when they have like a third party they do better because you know there's something washing over their head which is definitely true. Yeah. Because like some of you mentioned like the Minions ride. I was so, I, I remember going on the ride for the first time. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I love the Minions. I can't wait to yeah. see this ride. I'm like, oh, wow. I feel like I can make a better ride in my backyard than this. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> luckily, <laughs> with the change of um, whenever that new CEO came in, <laughs> he definitely directed some more investment to the parks division because yeah. ever since he came in, Things like uh, the Velocicoaster and Secret Life of Pets, they look fantastic. Also, you haven't been on them yet, but like Secret Life of Pets is like 97 animatronics and facial recognition technology. So whoever that new CEO is, thank goodness, because like you said, they can be on like a Disney level if they like really put their heart into it. Well, the, well, the, yeah, definitely, definitely they could. And, and, and um, you know, I think that the best thing that ever happened to Universal was Comcast buying them. Mm -hmm. Because now they have like, you know, now, now they have a company like, like, like Disney has where they have like synergy opportunities, mm -hmm. you know, Comcast believes in the parks, they give them proper funding. Mm -hmm. it, it was a really a good, it was really a good marriage for them. I think Comcast really worked out for them and um, they have a bright, Universal has a really bright future and I think they're going to do a lot of, continue to do a lot of great things. Yeah, and I'm still waiting for that second park over here. I know, nice, a I know. Real islands of adventure type park right here. That'd be great. They can't they buy some land like in like Santa Clarita or something, <laughs> or like out yeah, in Valencia or somewhere so much, where there's like a lot of land. Yeah, so much desert over there. I mean, it doesn't have to be connected. I'll drive an extra hour to go to Universal Second Park. It's fine with me. It doesn't have to be a Disney World situation over here. No, come no, on, no, yeah, come on, Universal. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> yes, listen to us. <laughs> and speaking of Disney, they uh, <laughs> I made a video say about how a few weeks back, Josh Tomorrow said that the Splash Mountain thing has been fast tracked and there can be more inclusion in Disney rides. So I, I asked this question on the <laughs> to my subscribers, but which rides? Which existing rights do you think will be changed next for like have more inclusion or whatever? Well, I, I think I think the Jungle Cruise is is definitely on their short list. Um, there are some uh, problematic <laughs> scenes in that. <laughs> in that, <laughs> yeah, in that in that, uh, in that attraction, that I think they're probably going to want to address. Um, so I think Jungle Cruise is definitely on on their radar. Um, now I don't know how far that'll go though. Like, I don't think they're going to completely like, I don't think they're going to retheme jungle cruise. Like, but I do think they're going to swap out a, a few scenes and add something different. Um, is this, outside where, of, is this where the rock comes in with the what? I'm sorry. Is this where the rock comes in? Is oh, maybe. They yeah. Just maybe. Swap out those problematic scenes with scenes from the new movie. Cause that could be an easy fix. That could be an easy fix. Yeah, it could be kind of be like what they did with Pirates with, with Jack mm. Sparrow inserting him in. They might mm. do the same thing with The Rock. Um, so I think that's definitely something that they're going to look at for sure. And let's see. I think, yeah, because I was trying to think of some, and I, I couldn't think of many other things that they could, or many other attractions, problematic, problematic scene. Yeah. You know, not a Jungle Cruise one, but I think I think that's it, is there? Yeah, that's it. I mean, I, 
Yeah, I mean, some of these rides have like, um, like Tiki Room. Mm -hmm. Some of the dialogue's a little iffy, but I don't, yeah, I mean, I don't know how, how far they'd go with changing that one out. Yeah, and I'm not sure about Disney World because I know a lot of the rides, but I, I only been there one time. But yeah, the way he said it made it seem like he had this long list of projects. I'm like, I wonder what he's going to change next. Well, well, and also, it, I think it's going to be kind of a, from what I understand, I think it's going to be kind of a mix between um, addressing these problem areas and retheming them or changing them out, but also just adding in more inclusion. So, for example, they might add like, you know, this is just, you know, um, speculation, but uh, they might add like a, uh, like a Coco Dark Ride in in california adventure now it's not necessarily replacing something problematic but they're adding that inclusion to the park i think we're going to see mm -hmm. stuff like that too where it's not necessarily replacing something mm -hmm. but it's adding more inclusion to the park you know yes that makes that's a good point that makes sense yeah you don't have to really take away something but you can diversify something by taking away empty space like through the sky school Boom, boom, where's my drums? Yeah. <laughs> and you know, yeah, exactly. Take away Sky School. And like, for me, like Coco is just like the perfect um, IP for California Adventure for a number of reasons. Number one, it's Pixar. And we have a whole area now dedicated to Pixar. Um, so it's perfect for in that regard. But aside from that, it's, it's, uh, it's a movie based on Mexican culture. And that's a huge part of California. You know, I mean, it's a massive part of California. So I think it really, Coco really hits DCA on multiple levels. And, mm -hmm. and they would be stupid not to add Coco to California Adventure. I mean, it's perfect. Yeah, and it's just a great movie. So, and it's very colorful. And that would be very, that translates well to a dark ride attraction. Where we color, like Mickey and Minnie's Running Away, very colorful. Yeah, exactly. Now, have you heard, Ethan, um... Have you heard anything about like the timeline? Like I know he said, I know Demaro said that he wanted to fast track the Splash Mountain rethink, mm -hmm. but have you heard anything about like uh, like the timeline? Like did he mention anything in there saying like when they're gonna do this or? Yeah, he didn't say anything. But if I go off rumors of before where 2022 was a start time, then maybe 2021 would be a start time. Wow. Yeah. Except that's next year. It's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, like wow. I mean, and they still says it's gonna open with the park. So yeah. Although he doesn't know when it's gonna open. So uh, maybe a uh, maybe like a uh, you know they like it like a uh, probably I'd say maybe a January seventh, twenty twenty two. You know, like right after again that slow season part. You know, right after the holidays where all the refurbs usually begin. Maybe like early in 2022, like right after the holiday season of next year. Yeah. Well, now I was going to ask you too. I'm curious what your thought on like what is the like for for Princess and the Frog? How it, like you know Splash Mountain sits like kind of between mm -hmm. like um it kind of sits right there between New Orleans Square and Critter Country, which I think is perfect for this IP. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's flawless. Um. But what do you think is going to happen with Critter Country? Are they going? Do you think they're going to completely like kind of like turn it into like a New Orleans area and get rid of Pooh? Or are they just going to kind of leave it and just have like um, Prince of the Frog kind of straddle both? <laughs> you know, I'm not sure because and a lot of people will want Tiana's place. And I feel like Hungry Bear would be like Tiana's place. You know? Yeah. But they could leave it, at least for now, because I'm sure they have like budget constraints because of the whole thing. Um, yeah. So, they couldn't believe it because, like I've mentioned before in a few uh, videos, it makes sense because, like, if you go to actual Louisiana, you know, I have New Orleans right on the bayou there. Then you go 20 minutes to the north and kind of like in the back country or like in the sub, what there would be their suburbs. And that's like at the critter country type of area. So you, you have these big mansions and these big people have like acres and acres of land. And there's like alligators walking around in your backyard. So yeah. I feel like it makes sense because, you know, Tiana, although, see, then it would make more sense if Tiana's place goes towards where Haunted Mansion is, you know, because that's like, that would be like the city part of it. Then Winnie the Pooh would be like the suburbs, country area. Like, it may, 
I could definitely make sense because in Louisiana, it's that's like how it is. So yeah, yeah. but it does make sense in Disney World though because there's definitely no frontier areas in Louisiana. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, we we definitely got we definitely have the better the better situation out here because I think. Like I think it's I think our I think that Princess and the Frog um, franchise it, it's such a perfect fit for Splash Mountain the the location between Critter mm-hmm. Country and New Orleans because like you said I mean it, it plays to both like the alligators mm-hmm. and everything can play to the Critter Country side mm-hmm. but then it's very New Orleans it's very jazzy that plays to the New Orleans side it really is flawless and then over in Florida it makes really no sense. <laughs> Yeah, because like even yeah, he in the movie as you know, they spent a significant amount of time, and like would be like a critter country setting, like on the river, just going down the river, you know. Yeah. So it makes yeah it makes perfect sense here. Definitely, there's no gold miners of or any type of horses or any type of <laughs> <laughs> any type of big thunder mountain train going around there. So Disney World has some work to do. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> unless they change their mind in general. And, do something else, but yeah, they like, done some work to do over there. But like the, the Ken Poe trucks, I'll be like, oh, thank goodness, we don't have to do anything. This is, we can just change the rides. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's so. I'm just, I'd say it's 2022. I can't believe it's almost 2021. That's it's crazy. It's cr- it's absolutely crazy. Like, what like wow, it's insane. Um, <laughs> like California Adventures. 20th anniversary is just in a couple of months. Oh and my god, they still be closed for it. Oh, hey, sad, what? sad, like wow. And that means those four cast members who are laid off, they just they're seeing another layoffs, a round of layoffs here. Are they gonna anybody gonna be able to work left when the parks reopen? That's that's the other thing, yeah. I mean, I think they're keeping like from what I understand, they're keeping like a core group just in case. They can reopen. They, they can they can bring them back, um, but they're laying off a lot of people. It's 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 terrible. It's really terrible. These people, you know, their livelihoods they're they're being uprooted, you know, and uh, it's always sad to see that man. I, I've been uh, I've been down that path myself personally. Not Disney. I never worked for Disney, but like you know mm-hmm. other jobs. Yeah, where I've been yeah. laid off and stuff, and it, it's it's a very stressful, hard situation to go through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially when uh, there's some expensive rents to pay nowadays here in California. Like, wow, poor laid off people. Hopefully, they get their jobs back. That yeah. that, that means they can get their layoff means they can, get, they can recall you, right? Or does that mean they're gone? No, furlough is they can recall you because you're still technically employed. Layoff, um, lay, you're not employed. layoff, you're 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 out oh, of the company. That's terrible. <laughs> you're you gone. Start over again. <laughs> Yeah, but the good news, but the good news is that because they left on good terms, um, you know, they they probably have a good chance if they wanted to, when the parks reopen, to approach their management team and say, hey, you know what, are you still, are you, you know, is there a spot available? And if you, you know, you had a good work history and you had a good rapport with your management team or whatever, I'm sure some of these people will come back. They'll get rehired. You know. Yeah, I hope so. Hopefully, goodness, especially the entertainment people. <laughs> Because like I said before, this stream started, this this video started, how good of a job Knott's was doing with their entertainment stuff. Disney hopefully will bring them all back because yes. that nice street smoke sphere and you have those bands on the street. It's very nice. It, it but, is. Yeah, the, the entertainment's a huge part of Disney, you know? And that's really why I fell in love with Disney was because of the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. So when I go to the parks, I spend a lot of time just chilling or walking around, mm-hmm. you know? I love that. It's awesome. Have you been to Buena Vista Street yet? I have not. No, I saw your video though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got to check it out. It's pretty nice, just stepping back in there. Yeah, and you got a good look at the Avengers Campus too, right? Oh yes, super nice, including the gate, the now famous gate. Yes, <laughs> the, <laughs> the performance gate or the festival area gate, or whatever that intense it's very nice theme though just i can write in grizzly peak i mean a lot of grizzly peak type but also kind of carthay circle type theme yeah it's uh like you said in your video it's like a generic california adventure theme it's super nice i can stare at it all day long 
Oh yeah, me too. I love additions like that, you know, because that's what really that's what really makes like those little details are what makes it Disney. That and, and that's what Disneyland has. You know, they have a ton of those little details everywhere. And when you have really cool details, little ones everywhere, eventually the whole park is amazing, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like the same thing. If if they continue to add these little like little nuggets of like really highly themed things. Before you know it, we're going to have a pretty impressive park. DCA is going to be a solid second gate. That's right. You can take your spider bot and fight other spider bots on Buena Vista Street. Yeah. <laughs> now, did you get a spider bot, Ethan? Did you get one? Oh, I, I did not, because I think they go to on sale to the general public on December 4th. But I'm kind of running out of room. I have the droid. I have my Grogu interesting name grogu grogu animatronic. and i have like no room so i think i'm gonna have to just watch everyone else with their spider bots unless i get one for someone's uh, a, a gift but <laughs> dave from fresh baked today i don't know if you saw the video but he oh he got his spider bot and he is fighting with the crew from ordinary adventures that's pretty interesting kind of entertaining that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder how those spider bots are gonna do. I wonder because with the land not open yet, there's no frame like for the normies. You know, we're not the normies. We're we're the diehards. Yeah. But they're for like, the normies, <laughs> for the normies, they're not. What, yeah, what they're gonna? They don't. They don't know what this is. You know. Yeah, so. they have to get on the ride. And like, oh, it's that thing from the ride. I love it. Like, shoot. and that's what makes it like. Yeah, more hard sell because like a droid, you know, you don't need Galaxy's Edge to be open to sell a droid. Everyone knows what a droid is. Right. Um, so they do much better, even if they sold them like already built. Like I'm sure they'd outsell the spider bots any day because everyone knows what a droid is. But spider bots are a brand new thing that I mean no one knows what it, no one, no one even knows how they factor into the ride besides you have to catch them like Pokemon. <laughs> yeah exactly exactly <laughs> so we'll see you know I, i'm sure when the land opens though they won't have any trouble selling them but i think right now it's gonna be a little hard for them just my guess you know trying mm -hmm. to sell that when there's no frame of reference to the normies <laughs> although in dave's video he made a good point is that maybe disney cast members should do like demonstrations of them fighting because apparently he said <laughs> when they were playing with their spider bots and like blowing their heads off or whatever that <laughs> they got like a, a decent group of people were asking them what is that and how do i get one so i really? feel like maybe a cast member or some cast members just kind of played with them like you know they do demonstrations outside a mall they might sell more than they anticipate that's pretty That'll cool so so they they like the, the heads that like they, they fall apart when when they when they battle like their arms yeah so they have the the little spiders have their lights on then they press some buttons and they just kind of ran and press buttons and all of a sudden one just goes boom in the head the top actually comes flying off and it's just kind oh of that's cool <laughs> you know be before your time ethan before your time they had i don't know they had i don't know if you remember but you remember crash gummies yeah like the ones where like on test track where you know or, you, or like when like when they're testing a car and they crash it and yes all those things yes they used to have um when i was young they used to have these toys they were crash dummy toys mm -hmm. but what they were the, so the, they had the figures the crash dummy figure and then they had like cars and you would you would basically the, whole, the it would be whole but there's like joints everywhere in these figures and in the cars uh -huh. and when you when you run them against the wall they like they explode fly and apart. fly everywhere <laughs> They were awesome. They were absolutely awesome. And that's what these spider bots, when you describe them, remind me of. Like, they just go that nuts. sounds pretty up. cool. Like, and then just fly over. I like that. I have... go... Yeah, check it out. You know, if you go, on, I'm sure they have, like, like, there's a video for everything nowadays. If you go on YouTube and, and do Crash Dummy Toys, you'll probably find something. They were, they yeah, were, they were dope. They were really cool. I'll have to check it out. Like this video if you had a Crash Dummer back yes. in the day. And comment below. Yeah, come. Yeah, send me some pictures of what they look like. <laughs> send your favorite. Send your favorite crash test dummy. Like, but yeah. So that's what the Spider-Man Spider Bots look like. The rest of the Avengers campus. I love Marvel, but my goodness, I must say, I hope that's just like their initial limited thing. Cause I wasn't too impressed. It was like just a shirt, like a blue, like something like this, but yeah. like the Avengers logo on the side, and that's it. 
Yeah, like, the merch, oh. the merch, the merch, like the stuff reminded me like the, like the cheap stuff you buy at Kohl's or something. <laughs> like, yeah. like, <laughs> Except you know, for $40. Yeah, like those like novelty shirts at Kohl's or like Target or something. Um, the, the Avengers hat was pretty cool, like the black one with the logo. That was pretty cool, but I don't wear hats ever. So, yeah, I honestly thought that AP button they give you that was like super sized. I think that looked like the coolest piece, coolest thing besides the Spider Body because it had in the A logo it had uh, the outline of Mission Breakout in the Spider Man ride. I was like, oh, that's so cool. That's pretty and, awesome. And it reminded me of the Galaxy's Edge opening day shirt where it had the outline of the land, the white one where it has the, like a backdrop of the land as a Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. That's what it reminded me of. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's super cool. But that's kind of sad that your button is better than the rest of your merchandise. Uh, yeah, that is. That is <laughs> and that it's is free. Pretty... That's the free thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is pretty sad. <laughs> That is pretty sad. Yeah. Hopefully they step up their game and I'm sure they will. Once the land officially opens, mm -hmm. I'm sure they're going to, they're going to have a lot better, a lot better merch. Um, and I'm yeah, just excited. Yeah. Like honestly for the vendors campus, I'm just really excited that <laughs> this is kind of nerdy, but that, that mission breakout finally fits into the park. I have a reason to get like a sore thumb anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's not like this <laughs> random thing anymore. Now it has, a, it, you know, it's going to be part of a, a bigger land. It mm -hmm. matches a theme. So I think it's I think it's great. I, I I'm really excited about that. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited for two things: some Doctor Strange merch because I love Doctor Strange. Yeah, he's and cool. The uh, spider, the Spidey stunt tronic. I heard that they've been like after the park, the Brain of Industry closes. They've been testing the Spidey stunt tronic, which is encouraging news because that means they want to debut that with opening the land even if there's stuff in place. So that'd be super cool. It'd be really cool if you're on Bain Vista Street and you can see it testing. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I'm really, really curious about this animatronic and what kind of show it's going to give us. Like, is it going to, like, are they really going to flip this thing in, in the air and go <laughs> over the left? Like, that's crazy. Well, yeah, that's, like, super cool. Like, what if you go thing you just imagine, like, like in like a like a like a pose like guys <laughs> you know Spider Man is like <laughs> it better do that <laughs> or I want my money back <laughs> I'm halfway in the air I see you down there oh yeah I'm <laughs> things some Spidey catchphrases I hope it talks like I hope and I hope Tom Holland or one of the other Spider Man has like does the voice for it or else it just wouldn't feel natural yeah no actually you know what I. I could be wrong, but if I'm not mistaken, a few months ago, I think, well, more than a few months ago now, I think it was even before COVID, but I heard that Tom Holland actually did record some stuff for the land. Um, yeah, I heard that too. Was it for the ride only or was it for like everything? That's a good question. That's a good question. It might be just for the attraction. Hopefully they got some cuts for him for the I mean, animatronic too. I guess. I guess it's kind of part of the ride because it's on the ride building. So maybe, maybe yeah. we can... Uh, Get get some cool because there's like two cranes, so he's definitely gonna be on a few flips up there, which should be super cool. In the latest aerial image, you can see the big hole where it will be launched up. It's awesome. I'm just trying to imagine and then flipping. Oh like, yeah, super cool. I think that's better than that's probably better than the ride. Pro yeah, probably. <laughs> Honestly, probably. Like, I, I think that's gonna be pretty dope. And I think that I, I'm really excited for the Doctor Strange show. I think that's gonna be awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, yeah, in that area, according to the latest the construction photo, it's not just like some Jedi training academy type area. It looks like it's a really like souped up, really themed area. There's all these rocks and crystals. It looks just something cool to just look at, even if, when there's no show. Yeah, and I have a feeling, like, I've been watching a lot of, like, I've seen a lot of your construction updates, the aerial stuff, and I've seen a lot of, like, Dave from Fresh Bake stuff, but, like, if you look, when you look down on that, it's very, like, it seems like they've enclosed it, like, mm -hmm. like it's going to be a very controlled kind of show, so I'm thinking that there's going to be, like you said, like, there's going to be, like, moving pieces, like, giant rocks, and mm -hmm. things that lift up, and, like, maybe a wall comes down or something, like, I have a feeling yeah. it's going to be a real interactive kind of kind of show. Yeah, and yeah, and if they use that same technology that Universal uses with the magic windows, like, but with something like if everyone gets, like, I don't know, he doesn't use a wand, but he uses those orange. Things. Oh yeah, those things. But, yeah, but if, like, imagine everyone having those orange things, and everyone can like 
and have their own rock and make it move. That'd be super cool. Oh man, I'd be there all day. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> super cool. This Avengers campus, you know, this small. It's maybe a little small, but it's packing quite the punch when you really think of it. Yeah, it does. It, it's a much better use of space in Bugs Land, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think I think it's going to add an interesting aesthetic to DCA because really Bugs Land was cool, but it really didn't add anything aesthetic wise. Cause it was basically just a bunch of trees, you know? Yeah, you can't even see it. You couldn't even see I it. Exactly. The point, but yeah, you can see yeah. it. <laughs> this is a bunch of trees, you know. At least this <laughs> we're gonna get like you know, pretty interesting looking architecture. It looks like almost like Pacific Wharf and Tomorrowland kind of hybrid. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. And the lastly here, well with Frozen gone, do you think I feel like that gives them a perfect opportunity to add some kind of indoor like stunt show for like marvel themed and then oh yeah you can like seal off hollywood land and hollywood hollywood land with hollywood boulevard in the back lot avengers campus and started the hyperion to mission breakout into avengers campus and i feel like it would be it would clearly define the land but also it's like so big like can, i can imagine like some acrobatics or like people flying in above their your seats i feel like a cool stunt show would really fit well there yeah i agree i think that'd be pretty cool to have a marvel stunt show in there you know definitely why not yeah, i mean that would be awesome and and i think that i think you brought up a good point where it would start the avengers campus out a little more mm -hmm. and and create a clear a clear entry you know into mm -hmm. the land before you get in, before you go into breakout and all that so yeah and they can put some of those cool fancy retro futuristic lights that they have and they can just put it right over there and that would make a clear entrance sign if they want to put their little barcode barcode paving stones they can put that too <laughs> yeah yeah I, i'm really hopeful for this uh, avengers area i think it's gonna be pretty cool i think it's a good addition i'm, I'm always excited when dca gets new stuff it's, it's yeah me too the little child that could yeah you know i've been watching this little park grow up you know <laughs> since 2001 and it's like you know it had some rough and a rough a rough few first years but it's really grown into a decent park and i think it's just getting better you know exactly well whoa wow well, look at that time just flies doesn't it we're <laughs> out of, and out of time on this short quick but impactful update so everyone go subscribe to orange grove give them three thousand subscribers yes That's subscribe to me we're so close to a thousand i can smell it <laughs> <laughs> and don't you have don't you have a, a a thing going on right now road to a thousand oh yes the road to a thousand i have so many prizes available starting at 910 subscribers you get a theme park wizard button and all the way up to a thousand subscribers where i'll even pay for your disney plus subscription for an entire year so please subscribe to the channel and have a fantastic day bye-bye now <laughs>